SwiftUI uses core animation for its rendering by default, which offers great performance out of the box. However, for complex rendering, you might find your code starts to slow down. Anything below 60 frames a second, or FPS, is a problem. But really, you ought to aim higher, because many iOS devices now render at 120 FPS. To demonstrate this, let's look at some example code. We're going to create a color cycling circle view that renders concentric circles in a range of colors. The result will look like a radial gradient, but we're going to add two properties to make it more customizable. One to control how many circles should be drawn, and one to control the color cycle. It'll be able to move the gradient start and end colors around. We can get a color cycling effect by using the color, hue, saturation, brightness initializer. Hue is a value from zero to one controlling the kind of color we see. Red is both zero and one with all other hues in between. To figure out the hue for a particular circle, we can take our circle number, e.g. 25, divide that by how many circles there are, e.g. 100, then add our color cycle amount, e.g. 0.5. So if we were circle 25 of 100, with a cycle amount of 0.5, our hue would be 0.75. One small complexity here is that hues don't automatically wrap after we reach 1.0 which means a hue of 1.0 is equal to a hue of 0.0, .0 red. But a hue of 1.2 is not equal to a hue of 0.2. As a result, we're going to wrap the hue by hand. If it's over 1.0, we'll subtract 1.0 to make sure it always lies in the range of 0.0, .0 to 1.0. Here's the code. Struct color cycling circle conforms to view. Var amount equals 0.0. .0 var steps equals 100, var body returns some view, z stack, for each zero up to steps, value in, circle, dot inset by cg float of value, dot stroke border, self dot color for value, brightness one, line width two. Then we'll add that color for method, func color for value, int brightness, double returns color. var target hue equals double value divided by double self dot steps plus self dot amount. If target hue is greater than one, target hue minus equals one. Return color hue target hue, saturation one, brightness brightness. We can now use that in a layout binding its color cycle to a local property controlled by a slider. At state, private var color cycle equals 0.0. .0. vstack, color cycling circle, amount self.color cycle. Dot frame, width 300, height 300. Slider, value dollar color cycle. If you run the app, you'll see we have a neat color wave effect controlled entirely by dragging around the slider, and it works really smoothly. What you're seeing right now is powered by core animation, which means it'll turn our 100 circles into 100 individual views being drawn on the screen. This is computationally expensive, but as you can see, it works well enough. We get smooth performance. However, if we increase the complexity a little, we'll find things aren't quite so rosy. Replace the existing stroke border modifier with this one. Dot stroke border, linear gradient, 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 colors, an array of self.color, for value, brightness one. Self.color, for value, brightness 0 0.5. Start point dot top, end point dot bottom, line width two. That now renders a gentle gradient, showing bright colors at the top of the circle down to darker colors at the bottom. And now when you run the app, you'll find it runs much slower. SwiftUI is struggling to render 100 gradients as part of 100 separate views. We can fix this by applying one new modifier called drawing group. This tells SwiftUI it should render the contents of the view into an off-screen image before putting that back onto the screen as a single rendered output, which is significantly faster. Behind the scenes, this is powered by Metal, which is Apple's framework for working directly with the GPU for extremely fast graphics. 
So, modify the color cycling circle body to add this modifier to the end of the Z stack. Dot drawing group. Now run it again. With that one tiny addition, you'll now find we can get everything rendered correctly, and we're also back at full speed even with the gradients. Now I should add here, the drawing group modifier is helpful to know about, and to keep in your arsenal as a way of solving performance problems when you hit them. But you should not use it that often. Adding the off-screen render pass might slow down Swift UI for simple drawing, so it's better to wait until you have an actual performance problem before trying to bring in drawing group.